I just like to, you know, smoke a joint every now and then. Good people don't smoke marijuana. You dick! Welcome to Vote Pro Podcast. Brought to you by VotePropot.com. I think uh, kudos goes out to cannabis for winning the uh, war on drugs. <laughs> Cannab- cannabis won the war cannabis. on drugs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the day after the Seems election. Seems that way. I don't know if they won the war, but they sure enough you know, winning a lot of battles. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good morning, everybody, wherever you may be. And uh, welcome to Vote Pro Podcast once again. I'm Phil Adams. I'm Jay Britton. I'm Andrew McCready's. And we have a whole bunch of things to go over today. Today being the day after the midterm elections, we're going to give you a roundup of the midterm election results as it pertains to cannabis law. And there was a few initiatives uh, uh, that that went through and some that didn't. We're going to uh, bring you an op-ed uh, that was in Wall Street Journal by former House Speaker John Boehner entitled Washington Needs to Legalize Cannabis. And that's going to be uh, very interesting. But first, the big story today, as we predicted uh, a, a few episodes ago, it is now the day after the midterm elections and Jeff Sessions has been fired. Imagine that. <laughs> Attorney, just hours, literally, after the 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 election was over, uh, President Trump has announced Attorney General Jeff Sessions is leaving the Department of Justice, and uh, none too soon for for us on the uh, on the side of legalization. Attorney General Sessions submitted his resignation at the request of President Trump. In other words, he was fired. <laughs> yep, <laughs> on Twitter. No, no, he did it in 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 writing. <laughs> on Twitter. Um, now this is a, a letter that a lot of people have. Um, Imagine that it was probably written some time ago and finally dated and signed today. And it says, at your request, I am submitting my resignation. Since the day I was honored to be sworn in as Attorney General of the United States, I came to work at the department every day, determined to do my duty and serve my country. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and um, now I don't think uh, cannabis legal reform had really anything to do with this decision i think it all has to do with um russia well well with the with the russian collusion <laughs> invest the Mueller investigation sessions recusing recused himself, himself. Really the, yeah right trump probably has form letters where just you fill in jeff sessions and here you go you're fired actually i i oh, did yeah. hear from a source close to the president that the president provided the letter for him to sign who knows if it's yeah, true well, that's not yeah that's, that's not, not hard to imagine no but he's been very clear about his unhappiness with sessions i mean saying things at, at, such as at one point he said i don't even have an attorney general and that's sad um he he expected sessions to do uh, to have his back a little more than he than he has yeah well, it's not the attorney general's job to have the president's back. It's his job to be the attorney general of the United States. Well, Holder sure had Obama's back. Well, <laughs> you know, Eric Holder certainly did have Obama's back. I'll say. You know, and, and I think it's it's not uh, too much. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. Um, I think it's not too much for the president to have an attorney general that, that he trusts um, and, and that is on his side. I don't know. I, I think a politician's first priority is to the country, not to the president. I mean, that's just my opinion. Well, no, I think that's true, too. Um, but um, I think what this means for cannabis legal reform is very big. Um, I think it's really been Sessions that's been the, the, the fly in the ointment here, if you will. I think he's the one that's that's 
you know, the the uh, the roadblock in all of this. Um, I don't know that to be a fact, but it just seems like it is. Well, I think it was interesting if you guys saw the news. I mean, literally, this came out a few hours ago. And within a couple hours, um, Mayor Bowser had a press conference to talk about legalization of sales of marijuana in D.C. Mayor of D.C. She's, she's working on legislation, which she expects to have out by the first of the year is what she said. Now, what happened in D.C., for those who aren't familiar, Andrew could tell us, but they legalized possession. You can, you can, you can possess uh, cannabis. You can smoke cannabis. You can give it to your friends. But there's no sale of cannabis in D.C. Well, what happened was the, the D.C. cannabis campaign on their own, uh, the Marijuana Policy Project passed on D.C. for that election. Uh, and uh, the D.C. cannabis campaign got some backing and they started a ballot initiative. Now, they realized that it wouldn't pass if you had a ballot initiative that forced the United, the D.C. government to spend money setting up a regulated system th- that they couldn't do that. You had to get Congress's authorization and they were not going to authorize it. So they wrote up a ballot initiative that made it legal to possess and grow your own. And that passed. So now yeah. in D.C., you can grow your own. You can give up to two ounces away, but you can't sell it. Well, and the reason, again, as you as you just made clear, was because of Congress. Congress stood right. in the way of, of the sale. Um, they wouldn't appropriate the money. They wouldn't they wouldn't let that happen. So now already, I mean, my point is that within a couple hours of him uh, turning in his resignation letter, she was on on, on the podium giving a speech about legislation to legalize the sale in D.C. I think that's kind of incredible. I mean, he hadn't been gone for five hours and she was on the podium. So I I think this is going to have a huge effect. One of the things, guys, we need to talk about, though, is the guy replacing him. Um, You know, what what is that? You know, what good does it do if this guy, even though he's technically temporary, um, he may be there for a while. And, you know, I did some research. I'd never heard of the guy. Well, he's uh, his chief of staff. Right. So he was his chief he of might, staff. He, he might have a lot of similar. Well, yeah. Ideals. The interesting thing here is that um, normally when an attorney general goes, the deputy attorney general becomes the right. acting attorney general. But the deputy attorney general is one Rod Rosenstein. That doesn't really help Trump out no. to have Rosenstein as the acting attorney general for a number of reasons. And uh, again, having to do with the Mueller investigation, I think as far as what this fellow Whitaker, Matthew Whitaker, yeah. is the uh, chief of staff that Andrew's talking about, what his disposition is towards cannabis, we don't know. And we're just going to have to wait and see. Well, I, I did some research on that and I found a couple of conflicting things. Um, and you have to read some into it. He ran for the Senate in Iowa a few years back. Well, he was a talk show host on the Fox. Yeah, he worked Network. for CNN, but he ran for the Senate in uh, Iowa in 2014. You know, one of the things he 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 stated during the campaign was that he modeled himself politically after Rand Paul. That's kind of interesting because, of course, Rand Paul is a libertarian and very much pro. Uh, drug legalization in general, but certainly cannabis. So that's that's interesting. You know, you, you could take that in one way. But then I found another, a letter of resignation when when um, when, when Barack Obama took over because he worked for George Bush in the administration and he resigned when o- Obama came in. And he wrote a short letter. Um, Being a United States attorney is a greatest professional experience and honor of my life. I am very proud of what we have accomplished in this office. We have worked very hard these almost five and a half years to advance the goals of the Department of Justice. We have been firmly committed to protecting our citizens, all very generic stuff, from terrorist attacks, reducing gang and gun violence, protecting our children from predators, and reducing the availability of meth cocaine and marijuana in our communities so there there Uh-oh. you have the other side so who knows who knows the fact that that jeff sessions is not there anymore um i mean we did a, a segment last time about all of these growers applications basically being stuck in limbo because sessions didn't want to approve them they just languished maybe we'll see if those things move through maybe that'll give us an indication okay folks if you like 
vote pro podcast and if you agree with what uh what we're putting out here um we hope you'll please help us out and go to the show description down at the bottom of the page or go to apple podcasts or itunes and leave us a five-star rating or a comment or both if you feel it's warranted um how does that help us well the more five-star ratings and comments we receive the higher vote pro podcast moves up in the podcast search engines and that helps grow our audience why is that important because the more voters we can reach with up-to-date fact-based information about cannabis and the more we can dispel some of the wrong information that has accumulated over the decades the more people will vote hopefully for responsible humane cannabis laws so be sure to subscribe to vote pro podcast and you'll never miss an episode and please give us a rating leave us a comment now the other half of what went on yesterday (laughs) it seems like uh between today and yesterday a lot of things went on but um there were quite a lot of battles going on in the states actually four of them the 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 main four and so um This is um, an article from Esquire magazine, and it reads in part, uh, Today we woke up in a country where recreational weed is legal in 10 states, including, finally, a state in the Midwest. That, of course, refers to Michigan, and the Michigan residents voted for the legalizations of recreational, a.k.a. adult marijuana use. What does that mean? When it goes into effect, Michigan residents 21 and older will be allowed to use marijuana and marijuana edibles. They can also possess, use, transport, or process up to two and a half ounces or 15 grams of marijuana concentrate. They can grow up to 12 marijuana plants and store up to 10 ounces in their private residences. However, Local municipalities have the ability to outlaw dispensaries within their borders. Public use is prohibited, which is basically the same as Colorado. Uh, And people arrested for marijuana-related charges before this Prop Prop 1, it's called Proposition 1, was passed, will not have their records wiped. That's a shame. No, but Um, but they'll be downgraded. They'll be downgraded from crimes to civil infractions. So that's that's something. Okay. That, that was the negotiated that's point. Yeah. In other words, if you have a if you have a conviction, um, that turns into a civil infraction. So instead of having on your record that you were arrested and you know were convicted of a crime, you basically got a ticket. So so that that's still a pretty good step. Well, it's a big step. Yes. Also, I think more and more private companies are saying if you fail, a, if marijuana comes up positive on a drug test, they don't care. Well, that's I hope that's true. Remember what the FBI said uh, last year? Uh, they're trying to hire computer hackers to fight all this Internet terrorism. Uh-huh. And all the great hackers all fail the pot test. <laughs> Our stoners. <laughs> yeah, and good luck finding any computer hackers without any. They're all stoners. That's right. <laughs> that's interesting. And they had an FBI... An FBI official said, man, we got to we got to like change our rules. We got to start hiring people <laughs> who smoke pot because these guys just smoke pot, eat hot pockets and sit at their computers all day <laughs> and they can hack fucking anything. That's right. Yeah. Well, they're good at what they do. So, you know, leave them alone. Yeah. North Dakota. Measure three in North Dakota went down. Unfortunately, the North Dakota residents voted against the legalization of recreational marijuana and with its significant criminal justice reform, um, according to the Bismarck Tribune. Um, really not much else to say about that. Um, they tried it, it. It went down. Well, you know, I, what, one thing I would throw in there, Phil, is they didn't do a very good job of setting up this proposition. Um, and, and what I mean by that is the opponents used for their argument um, so the following. Um they said the law was, or the proposition was very unstructured. Uh, it allowed people to grow and possess as much cannabis as they want. They didn't have any limitations written in. 
So it was they were able to run commercials and ads, you know, that made it look like these guys didn't have their shit together because they didn't. They didn't do a very good job of writing this thing. Also, um, they they had it they had it set up for a legal system, you know, for production and sales and licensing, but there were no regulations and rules. So the point being, because it was so poorly written, it set up the opposition's argument that th- this isn't ready for prime time, guys. That they don't even they're telling you you can have it, but they don't even say how much you can have. They're telling you they're going to do licensing, but they have no idea and no instructions on how that's going to work. How much is it going to cost us? Well, that's that's common for a lot of uh, ballot initiatives. In almost every state, the ballot initiative says we're going to legalize it and give the legislation time to set up regulations. The more facts and the more instructions that are provided typically in a proposition, the the better the likelihood it's going to pass because it's more clear what it says. This was so unclear that it was much easier for the opponents to convince voters not to vote for it. Yeah. Well, they also had a a lot of opposition. I mean, that's... uh, that was one of the states where the police departments used their social networking platforms. Yeah, but they were saying it. they were saying things like, "How would you like your next door neighbor to be to to have two tons of marijuana in his house?" There's nothing in the law that says he can't. It just says he can have it. He can possess it. Th- those are the kind so, of ads they were running. It sounds so. Jay like like the voters of North Dakota may not have been against legalization of cannabis in principle. That's the hope. It's just that this law was poorly written. And and it speaks to what Andrew said many times. It's it's not just it's all well and good to talk about, you know, legalization, but you know, you gotta get your shit together when it comes to writing the law. I mean, not every law is a good law. Well in and you know, when they took uh in, in polling in North Dakota, it, it wasn't as strong as it is in other states. But some of the polling still had uh, ha- had voters in the plus side for legalization, with for for medical especially. But because this was so poorly written and, and prepared, it was so easy for the opponents to to tear it down and, and make it make it scary to to the voters. Better luck next time, North Dakota. Kudos to Michigan, and and let's go to the next one. Kudos to Utah. Um, the residents of Utah voted for legalization of medical marijuana, according to the Salt Lake Tribune. Um, what does the measure mean? Well, medical marijuana is now legal in Utah for people with qualifying medical conditions. It will be closely regulated by the state, which will set up approved dispensaries. Um, medical marijuana card holders will be permitted to purchase two ounces of unprocessed unpro- cannabis in a two-week period if they live more than 100 miles away from the pharmacy or dispensary they will be able to grow six plants in their home smoking marijuana is still illegal but other forms like edibles and oils for vaping will be allowed now again we 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 just talked uh last time about where was it that said um you can smoke it, but you can't eat it. Arizona. Yeah. Is that Arizona? <laughs> Arizona? Yeah. You can smoke it, but no concentrates. In Alabama, you can concentrate, but you can't smoke. Right. And Utah, you can concentrate and, and and eat, but you can't smoke. And you can vape. Well, you know, I have a question. I have a question for Andrew. Um, you were in the bar business for years. I'm ignorant on the laws with regard to alcohol. A lot of these propositions, they give local jurisdictions, you know, counties and cities, the ability to set up their own regulations or decide whether or not they want to have dispensaries. Is it similar in the alcohol uh, business? In other Absolutely. Words, yeah, it is? Okay. Absolutely it is. Because what happens is uh, the state will set the, like, the maximum. Uh, you know, like, for example, in the bar business, the state of Maryland says you can serve alcohol till 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, now, certain jurisdictions can go... Uh, you can uh, in our areas. You have to close by midnight. I see. So it's like we don't zoning. Have any bars open by midnight, right? But but the but the county can't come in and go. The state says you can stay up until two. In our county, you can stay up until two thirty. Right. right. I see. You can't do that. Right. So the state sets the 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 maximums, and then the the localities can come in and, and tighten it up from there. But they can't go beyond what the state says. Would a local jurisdiction be able to say um, we're going to be a dry we're going to be a dry town? Yeah. Well, yeah. There's yes. still dry towns. I thought still so. Alcohol dry towns in the United States and left dry over counties from, the, from alcohol prohibition. Right. So see, that's why I tell people don't don't be so concerned about some of the verbiage in some of these. Pro- it's it's the same as it would be for. 
I guess tobacco, alcohol, you know, where, like you said, the state will set up the maximums or the, the guidelines, and as long as you don't exceed those, you can do whatever you want within your jurisdiction. So that's, that's cool. And finally, Missouri, Amendment 2, Amendment 3, and Proposition C. Missouri residents voted for the legalization of medical marijuana in Missouri. Three ballot initiatives on medical marijuana. They passed Amendment 2, the initiative most like medical marijuana policy in other states. What it means is that medical marijuana will be legal for Missouri residents with a doctor's recommendation. They will be able to possess at least a 60-day supply. The state will set an exact limit and grow six plants in their homes. There will be a 4% sales tax on medical marijuana with revenue going toward veteran services. So um, stay tuned on some of the particulars on that, but um, kudos to Missouri, Utah, and Michigan. Well, one of the things I like about the Missouri one is that there's not a list of um, you know qualified uh, illnesses. You, you, the doctors, it's up to the doctor. Correct. That's a real plus in my eyes. That's correct. In Maryland, for example, and I think also the Utah law Mm -hmm. has a list of qualifying medical conditions, and other states do too. So, And it sounds like Missouri is just, if the doctor says you can use it, you can use it. So the midterm election, you know, it has been characterized characterized as a split decision in that the uh, Republicans held on to the Senate and the Democrats took hold of the House. And it's kind of a split decision with regard to cannabis as well, with North Dakota giving the thumbs down and Missouri, Utah, and Michigan giving the thumbs up. So do you think now uh, cannabis reform is going to have an easier time in the House? Yes. Why do you think that? Well, traditionally, the Democrats tend to favor reform more than the Republicans. Now, and re- uh, recently, more and more Republicans are seeing the light and coming be- coming out and changing their mind and, and supporting cannabis, although many of them wait till they leave office to do that. I just think it's like Phil, Phil said last show about the, uh, maybe it was a show before, about the kind of snowball effect we're seeing now. Um, you know, we're up to what, 33 states now or 34 that sounds right. Yeah, 33, 34. And one, yeah. thing, one thing we might mention, too, there was a, an initiative an issue, issue one on Ohio's ballot yesterday that failed miserably. And uh, it, let's see, it went down 64% of uh, Ohioans voted against it. Basically, it was a measure um, that would take cannabis-related crimes and, and convert them, I think, uh, and, and it would focus on treatment instead of incarceration. So it was a very generic kind of general, uh, and, it, and it failed miserably, which was a bit surprising to me, but I'm not really familiar with Ohio politics. Well, uh, a, a cannabis proposal failed last time, the last election in Ohio as well. Is that right? Okay. So maybe it's Ohio. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'd, I'd like to see the polling. I'll have to look that up. The, in the, but, in the but generic, in, in the previous election, the the uh, legislation that was up for vote was really poorly written, and it gave like a few private companies the mother load of of the hmm. profits from any kind right. of medical campaign right. industry. No kidding. So not well. all reform is so, good reform. Right. It's a perfect example. So just because a ballot didn't pass is not really. In some cases, it might be a big loss, but in some cases, it's not a big loss. It's just a setback. Yeah, yeah. or or a gain in the case of shitty, you know, really bad. Yeah, it's a del- it's a delay in the game. Also, yesterday in the election, Pete Sessions was not reelected, but he was a huge opponent to reform. So that that's another victory. That's right, and and there was we we spoke of in Michigan in the governor's race between Gretchen Whitmer for the Democrats and Bill Schwetty for the Republicans. Um, Bill Schwetty is adamantly opposed to legalization, and Gretchen Whitmer is in favor. And Gretchen Whitmer, and I don't, you won't hear me say this very often, but Gretchen Whitmer, the Democrat, thankfully won. Now, it's not just the United States, uh, Andrew, that uh, is moving towards legalization. Isn't that right? The Mexican Supreme Court just legalized cannabis. Now, apparently what happened was uh, two people sued the government, 
One was so he could grow it, and the other one was so he could use a cannabis. And and the Mexican Supreme Court ruled in their favor. Now that doesn't mean you can light up tomorrow, but what that means is now you know the Supreme Court hands that to the Mexican legislation, and they have to write up the, the law. So now let's see how that goes. So what were the laws on the books regarding cannabis in Mexico? I don't well, know. Well, it was against the law. And as a matter of fact, Mexico, is, it was a little bit harsher. I mean, they, a lot more people were in, were in jail for simple possession. No, I, I, I don't think this was, a, uh, this was the result of an arrest. I think this was the result of, a, um, of somebody, two people actually, just bringing a case to court. Oh, I see. Just, just with the claim that it wasn't constitutional? Correct. They were just right. not con- de- okay. yeah, declared unconstitutional. unconstitutional. Okay. And so now the United States is the only country in North America that uh, cannabis is illegal <laughs> wow. on a federal yeah. level. Man. And so, and now, what, now, what is, how is this going to affect the gray market? You know, so now all of a sudden what's going on, now we're going to see is now, because currently uh, Americans are not importing Mexican brickweed. That's just, it's, it's old news. They're not doing it. It's stopped. All the big uh, smugglers stop doing it. And what is happening is America is growing the best weed in the world and people are smuggling it into Mexico for the booming Mexican middle class. Right. It's uh, kind of reversed. So, right. Right. So now what's going to happen, you're going to have these American companies like they did in, Can- in Canada. They're going to go down to Mexico and start opening up uh, green- building greenhouses and being on a southern, you know, more southern with a longer growing cycle. And they're, they're going to start growing unbelievably great weed and, and legal greenhouses in mexico mm-hmm. i mean that's my impression aye, and, aye, aye, bang, bang. which means yeah which means they're gonna if that happens it depends on the timing uh if america doesn't legalize more uh you're gonna start seeing high-grade mexican weed start being smuggled back in the united states <laughs> and it just ebbs and flows back and forth <laughs> that's yeah. one of the reasons that went down in north in uh, north dakota i mean there's no limits Gee, I mean, I can grow 100 plants and grow. What are you going to do with two tons of marijuana? You're not going to smoke it, you know? So it's going to go into the gray market. You grow it legally, but you're going to sell it illegally, mm-hmm. you know? And until everything goes legal, there's always going to be a black market. Hmm. So you want to end the drug war, you got to legalize it nationally. So, Jay, um, there's another leading voice here in the States calling for legalization who would that be well as we've discussed before uh ex-speaker boehner is uh, very pro cannabis and i found it really interesting that he published an op-ed in uh in uh, the wall street journal yesterday november 4th the day before the election or the day before the day before the election i guess um and it's really a letter to the open public that it's titled washington needs to legalize cannabis Voters in four states may relax the rules Tuesday, bringing the total to 32. The letter is, um, you know, I, I my feeling is that he's aiming this at Republicans, largely, because they're the one, as we always say, that need to be convinced. Because the letter is very, uh, very generic. It gives a lot of facts that most of us know who are on the side of, of legalizing. But um, I'll read you a paragraph or so. The Drug Enforcement Administration must also soon stop classifying marijuana as a Schedule One narcotic, the same category as heroin. This status prevents many federally funded research institutions from studying how cannabis could treat sick Americans. It keeps major banks from investing in the industry that could create 654,000 jobs if marijuana were legalized in all 50 states today, according to a study from the New Frontier Data. And most cruelly, the Schedule One classification prevents veterans from gaining access to medical marijuana. So the whole letter is kind of framed like that, very generic facts that we all know, but that a lot of um, middle America um, may not know. And, and certainly he's making the case, I think, to the right. He closes out by saying, as a congressman, I learned that government works best when it listens to its constituents. Representatives have used what the people tell them to question constantly which policies are serving the greater good. It's past time for government to rethink how it approaches cannabis. So um, I, I think that's interesting. I mean, he could, have, he could have written a column about a lot of different subjects the day before the election. Um, you know, and he chose to, to, to 
use his prowess to write a column in um, one of the major you know, United States newspapers, the Wall Street Journal, on the subject of legalizing cannabis. What do you guys think about that? Well, He's I on think- the board of uh, one of the largest cannabis companies in the country. True. Yeah, and uh, he's- Good uh, enough reason he, for me. You think he has ulterior motives? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, well, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I think, yeah, he's, he realizes that it's no big deal. So he's using all the, he's so eloquently politically stated, he uses all the, the, the best arguments, the veterans, the uh-huh, kids, the right. unfairness, you know, yeah. the research, you know, uh, and- Deep down, he's saying, hey, I want to make some money off this. You guys got to vote for it. <laughs> well, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's the American way. There's nothing way. wrong with that. And, and, and Andrew, I think it's, it's you know, you, you mentioned that the, uh, the Democrats are typically the ones who tend to favor legalization more. The other side of that coin is that this is not going to go anywhere until the, the people on the right get on board. Exactly, and, and this is one guy on the right speaking to the right, saying, "You know, it's time. It's past right. time." He's yeah, going to be I, one of the most effective advocates for re, uh, cannabis reform that on the right certainly we have. have. You're on right. The, yeah, that's going to well, it's going to be effective of all of, them, of everyone, right and left. Yeah, you're and right. I mean, Andrew. The people on the left, you're preaching to the choir on the left. You know, right. Those, so this guy is going to change the minds of the people that's, that that count. Yeah, right. That's right. And, and make it politically viable for for conservative Republicans or, or libertarians to vote for legalization. There you go. Correct. I agree. Instead of instead of making it a a, a liability. Yeah, guys. Why don't why don't one of you guys get your assistant to send him a letter? Let's get him on the show. <laughs> All right. If I had an assistant, I would do that very thing. <laughs> <laughs> News out of uh, Puerto Rico, a young boy who has who's autistic and he was apparently he had a lot of he had cancer as a young kid and went through chemo and radiation therapy and surgeries and he survived. But then afterwards, they noticed that he had stopped speaking after he beat cancer. They aggressively started trying to treat him for the autism. And uh, so they tried uh, cannabis oil. And they said two days after he started cannabis oil treatment, he started speaking again. Wow. And he started Whoa. with just vowels. And then he moved on to, con- to consonants. And now he's speaking words. And they said one of the first things he said was, Amo mi mama, uh, which I think translates to, I love my mom. So imagine having, a, like, a, the kid's like four or five years old. Wow. Imagine having no a four kidding. or five year old oh, for that's... the first time hearing them speak. And what they tell you is they love you. I mean, that. In. Well, folks, thank you once again for making us part of your day. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Vote Pro Podcast, and we hope that you will keep in touch. Check us out at votepropot.com. Send us an email at votepropot at gmail.com. Please like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn search for vote pro pot and as always there's still so much to do stay involved keep informed and vote pro pot wish i was a fin bank at the cannabis cafe smoking good old sense me at the beginning of the day but here I am in New York City Hiding out the Central Park Getting kidnapped by the police Today sometime before dark But I wish I was up in Van At the Cannabis Cafe Smoking good old sense me Judge looked down upon me frowning. He said, kid, get on your way. Just don't start out your morning with espresso and a J. I said, I wish I was a big man. At the Canvas Cafe. Smoking good old sense media. Hit the 
hitched on down to court. Caught a ride up to BC. Took the bus over to the neighborhood to have a bowl with my coffee. Now I'm up in Vancouver at the Cannabis Cafe, smoking good old sense media. Good old sense 